Today, we'll be exploring the exciting new features and capabilities in ArcGIS Online. So let's go to Mount Rainier National Park. In order to learn a little bit more about the landscape, let's search the Living Atlas for recent imagery. The new search dialog allows me to find the items that I need quickly. I can show contents only within my map area or by item type, such as imagery layers. So let's search for Sentinel-2. Another exciting new feature is the ability to preview the item's details before adding it to my map. I can see that Sentinel-2 is 10-meter resolution, multi-spectral, 13-band imagery for the planet. It revisits the same place on Earth every five days, and there's a repository of images for the past 14 months, available to you in the Living Atlas. Sentinel-2 has also been configured now for different purposes, such as agriculture. We can use this layer to assess plant health or to look for things like different crop types or use it for environmental monitoring. So let's add it to our map. We'll take a closer look at our area. We can see the 30 glaciers that adorn Mount Rainier in blue, the vegetation in green, and we can see the city of Tacoma and Puget Sound to the north. Now, let's talk about something a little bit more ominous. Mount Rainier is a large, active stratovolcano capable of producing destructive debris flows known as lahar. Adding data from the USGS provides us with a predicted path of the lahar's flow. Understanding other potential contaminants in the area will help us to understand additional risks that are posed to the people that live in this area, as well as animals and the plant life. So let's add hazardous minerals and mine locations from the EPA. Using the new analysis tools in RTS Online, let's explore these relationships. We'll analyze patterns and use our new Fine Point Clusters tool. We'll set the minimum number of points to be considered in each cluster to 18. This takes about 30 seconds to process in the cloud, and it uses the machine learning algorithm HDB scan to evaluate large quantities of data. Requiring little user input, HDB scan processes point information based on its spatial location. Separating out natural clusters from areas that are empty or sparse. The next step in our analysis is to remove points that are not considered as part of our cluster. And next, we can use the new Summarize, Center, and Dispersion tool to look at the directionality of our data. We'll set an ellipse to a standard deviation of 1, and we'll group by our cluster ID. The new Summarize, Center, and Dispersion tool quantifies related point features in our data. Drawing an ellipse around the point clusters helps to visualize their directional orientation. While this is running, let's add a geology layer to our map. Adding the geology layer helps to explain some of the directional trends that we're seeing in our analysis, such as the relationship between surface mine activities and the underlying geology. So let's take a closer look. We can not only see the hazardous mines and minerals location impact the lahar flow, but we know that the lahar flow is going to travel down the point of least resistance, out to the sound. So let's switch gears a little bit and go look at some of our new vector base map enhancements. We have a variety of vector base maps available to us in RTS Online. They render quickly, they're crisp and clean, and one of my favorites, I think it'll be your favorite too, is the new OpenStreetMap vector base map. So let's add it to our map and take a closer look around Tacoma. We can see here in gray the number of buildings that have been contributed by thousands of people in the OpenStreetMap editor that have contributed to the open data community. 
let's take a look at the OpenStreetMap editor. So on the right, we have the editor where we can add our own contribution. But first, let's go to the same place in both maps. We also have something new and exciting to share with you that's coming out soon. It's the OpenStreetMap feature layers, where you'll be able to map buildings, streets, and points of interest. So we have the OpenStreetMap feature layer buildings on the left, and we have the OpenStreetMap editor on our right. Let's go make our own contribution to the open data community. We'll digitize our building, and we'll send it to the cloud. We can add additional information if we know it. And this will take about one to three minutes to process in the cloud. So while that's happening, I have something else that I'm very excited to share with you. The Vector Tile Style Editor, where we can make our own custom vector base maps. So let's get started making our own for our Mount Rainier project. We can select our style, such as the world topographic map, and we'll dial into our project area. First, I want to make sure that the labels of the cities and place names are more prominent. So we'll adjust the label size. Next, I'll change our font to be a little more bold. We can also edit the layer styles in the vector tile style editor. So let's change those to make sure that they stand out. We'll search for urban areas. We'll change the opacity and collapse the values. Let's change this to a nice dusty gray. Next, I know there are tribal lands in the area, so let's make sure that they're clearly visible on our map. We'll change the opacity and select a mustard yellow. The vector tile style editor has allowed me to make custom changes to my base map. I've adjusted the labels, layers, and colors. Let's save this and add it to our project. We can access our brand new custom vector base map through our contents pane. And we have two options. We can either add it as an item or as a base map. We can now clearly see not only the path of the lahar, potential contaminants that might impact the flow down to the sound, but also the populated areas and tribal lands that may be impacted. This can not only help us in understanding these relationships in the landscape, but they can help in terms of decision making moving forward. Let's go check on our OpenStreetMap submission. Drum roll, please. Our beautifully digitized building has traveled through space and time, syncing our OpenStreetMap edits on the right with our OpenStreetMap feature layer on the left. ArcGIS Online is growing in data, growing in capabilities, and growing with its users. I hope that you will go and explore all of the exciting new features and capabilities in ArcGIS Online to grow your organization. Thank you.